Golgotha gets its name, the place of the skull, from this very image here that is in the side of the mountain quarried during the first temple construction by Solomon. Stones were quarried from here to build the first temple. And it left a skull-like looking face in the side of the mountain here. Just above this area though, on the top of the hill, this is where the cross was actually placed and the man that we call Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, was actually crucified beside two thieves. From here, after his death, after the water came from his side and the blood for the redemption of Israel and all the world, his body was taken from that cross taken down, and of course the scripture tells us that he was placed in a tomb nearby. Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danun here in Israel at the Garden Tomb, the place where Yeshua was laid to rest and then rose again on the third day. There was something that came to my mind though and to my heart as I contemplated on coming here to the tomb to be able to speak to you about the events that transpired here. And in particular, was, the, was when he rose up from the dead. He comes out and he meets, the first one that he meets is Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James, was also there as well as Johannes. But it says here, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and see us two angels white sitting the one on the head and the other on the, at the feet where the body of Yeshua had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Yeshua standing, and knew not that it was Yeshua. And Yeshua saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yeshua saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I, ascended and I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that she had spoken these things, that he had spoken these things unto her. Now, in order to be able to capture the, the full scope of what actually happens here, you have to go ahead and read the the Gospels also of Luke, Matthew, and that's where you begin to see the entire picture of what takes place here. Over in the book of Luke, it speaks about how that the disciples did not believe their testimony, those that had seen him. And why is that? Well, as, Jew, as Jews, we have a custom, and it's kind of been perverted down through Christianity as well, that women do not have a voice. But even in Judaism, we find this really is not true. We see this in the story of Esther, the story of Ruth. We see this in the law of Moses as well, where women were given the right to have the inheritance of their father because there was no son. So the scriptures have just been misconstrued down through the years. In fact, when Yeshua come, the very thing that he restores is the fact that the right that the women have that right to speak for him. Even we see this when he abrades the apostles for not believing that he indeed had risen. They didn't believe his testimony. Now, ironically, this same similar story is told in the story of Moshe, the story of Moses, our beloved prophet. Moses, when he leaves Egypt, he goes into Midia, or to Midian. And oddly enough, a lot of times the stories depict Moses half dead when he gets there, but it doesn't really appear to be that way in the actual biblical account because he's able to, to fight off those shepherds that rose up against Moses' daughter, excuse me, against uh, uh, Jethro's daughters. Jethro being the fa father of seven daughters who were shepherds themselves who had led their flocks to the water to be able to drink, showing that women, even in Moses' time, were shepherds leading the flocks to the waters, the waters of life. 
And Moses stands up for them and pushes back the men shepherds and helps them to water themselves as well as the flock, showing that Yeshua in the future would also make that same type of stance. It's amazing, isn't it? Just to think about what the blood of Yeshua did for us. And His blood cleanses us from all sins. And in water baptism, what do we do? We are being cleansed of the blood guilt as Jews and as Gentiles. God bless you. I'm Stephen Bendenu, live here at the Garden Tour.